G'day, Hammerheads. Whoa. Arrgh. So I've got 11 one inch rotary hammers and uh, why don't we just head into the bench and I'll be able to give you a closer look at each one. So from DeWalt we've got the DCH133 and DCH273. Now these are not just D-handle and drop motor versions of the same tool, they are actually different tools. They've got different specs for some reason, I'm not sure why DeWalt would do that but hopefully the testing here will give us some ideas. So from Bosch we've got the venerable Bulldog, the GBH18V. 26D, so this is the D handle. And why the hell is this one orange? Well, it is a Ramset, actually. Ramset, as you probably know, is a concrete fastener manufacturer. They do run a small collection of cordless power tools as well, and this generation is a rebranded Bosch. So they tend to make the Primo ones. In this case, it is the GBH 18V 26F from Makita, the DHR242, also known as the XRH01, because you know what? Makita doesn't have enough bloody Xs in their model numbers. So I have done a deep dive video on this tool already, go check that one out. Uh, but we did see that she is rated a little bit lower in terms of impact energy and some other stuff than these other drills. So uh, let's see how she goes. So I've got two different Metabos here, depending on where you are in the world. So this is the German-made Metabo, uh, the, oh God, the name, KHA 18 LTX BL 24 QSE, the brick that smashes other bricks. Really cool little tool. And if you're in North America, you'll know this as Metabo HPT. But in much of the rest of the world, it was known as Hitachi. So gentlemen, please control yourselves when we talk about that. A couple of years ago, they changed the name to Hikoki. This is the old version, but it is the same tool. So from Milwaukee, we've got the venerable M18CH. So this is a bit of an older design. It was fuel. It's now sold under the model number M18BLH. So it's now brushless. It's been downgraded since this one came to market about a year ago. So this is the M18FH, the new fuel hammer. Uh, it is a little bit bigger. It does boast better specs and it's supposed to hit a bit harder too. So let's see how this one goes. So also from Tektronic Industries, we have the AEG BBH18BL. So as you can probably tell by the family resemblance, Tektronic owns both AEG and Milwaukee. So AEG is also known as rigid in some parts of the world. And also from the Tektronic stables, we have the Ryobi RSDS18X. So like most of you, I've been super surprised using this one because it is so much better than your standard Ryobi that you'd be used to. And I'd say the reason is because it is basically a scaled down version of the M18FH. All right, so let's look at the specs. I've got them all lined up here in alphabetical order and I'm not gonna list out each number. So if you do wanna take a look, uh, just pause it here. But I will point out the top ones of each category. So in terms of price, and this is of course dollary dues, uh, the DeWalt and also the Ryobi are best priced there. Historically, the DeWalt has been a little bit cheaper, more like 270, uh, but you know, this recent round of inflation has caused everything to go up. In terms of weight, the DCH133 is also the lightest. Now here in metric land, the capacity of most of these guys is listed as 26 millimeters. A couple of them are listed as 24, but you know, they're all just considered one inch rotary hammers. Uh, the, the newer Milwaukee M18FH has the highest impact energy, so they reckon. In terms of concrete removing power, the joules per minute, so this is just a measure of uh, the impact energy by the impacts per minute. Uh, the DCH133 is actually the top of that as well. So theoretically, the ones with the higher impact energy and impact rate should be drilling faster. So the first test is gonna be a speed test. We've got 12 millimeter bits drilling in 100 mil into one of these concrete retaining blocks. So it should be pretty easy for them, but uh, let's see how they go.
All right, so the Metabo actually came first in this test. How about that? Just, just beating out the Milwaukee by a fraction of a second with the bigger advertised impact force there. And also the DCH-133, which, you know, according to the specs, should theoretically be drilling the fastest. Other than that, we just had a nice spread of all these guys heading down the bottom, and uh, we ended up with actually the AEG in last place. How about that? So that test wasn't very taxing. Let's push them a little harder. So next we're doing 22 by 150 mil into this concrete block right here. So after putting them to a real test, the best drilling speed we got was actually the M18FH, followed by the Bosch Bulldog uh, D-Handle and then the Metabo. So because this is a big drill bit, it's going in deep and I'm not allowing them to get a breather by withdrawing any of the dust from the hole, this is actually a pretty good test of their torque as well. So uh, not super surprising to see the Ryobi way down the end here, because if you remember from one of my very first videos, this guy has bugger all torque for such a big drill. And note that this is their best drilling speed, so this is the best single run that any of the drills did. This was a pretty tough test for the tools, you know, drilling downwards, I didn't let the dust out. And I noticed that after the first run, most of them were noticeably slower. So I decided to include the average speeds here as a whole separate measure because it really felt like it was testing different stuff. When we look at the average speed, so averaging up a few of those runs, uh, we get a more holistic view of the tool and the battery, how they're all working together. So once again, in first place, we've got the M18FH, and now we're ending up with the two different Metabo flavors. So look, I couldn't decide which was going to be the most informative way to present this to you, so I'm just going to put both out there. So if we just average up the ranks from the performance tests only, uh, the Milwaukee ended up coming up number one. So he had first place, first place, and second place uh, in those three measures, and next was the Metabo, and then the DCH-133. But, you know, not everyone cares only about performance. Other factors come into it like price or weight, so the best overall ranked drill was the DCH-133. What an absolute little legend of a thing. Really good performance, as well as being best value and lowest weight. What a cracker. Uh, coming in in equal second was the Metabo with the really long model number and the Milwaukee M18FH. 
So here we've got our two winners. The best overall hammer is the DeWalt and the best performing hammer is the Milwaukee. So it's great to see Milwaukee is back in the game, but I gotta say, this tool is supposed to be optimized for a high output battery. And uh, I'm just wondering why they need that for a, a pretty standard tool. I mean, a one inch rotary hammer is nothing special. And once again, I'm wondering how the hell DeWalt does it. Are they selling this tool at a loss? Yes, it's basic, but it's the cheapest, the lightest, you know, one of the most powerful. And this is just with the standard like XR battery as well. We don't even have the bigger power stacks available yet. So what's going on with the DeWalt hammers? This one performed near the top. This one performed near the bottom of the pack. Uh, what the hell is going on? This one is a fair bit more expensive. And basically what it comes down to is this one is all about comfort. I'm pretty sure. It's not as powerful, it's not spec'd as high, but it does have all sorts of vibration dampening and stuff like that, and it feels really nice. It is a super smooth ride. I wasn't sure if it was even working properly when I started using this thing, because it just doesn't vibrate you at all. And the Bosch D-Handle, just an absolute benchmark drill. I really like using this one, and although we had the Pro Core on here, I'm not really sure how much of a difference that's made. So I've already done a deep dive for this drill, but I'm gonna to have to do another one uh, and actually nut out what's going on with the Procore batteries too, so stay tuned for that. So the two Metabos, they both did really well in this test. These are both awesome tools. So these two brands, they're not the most common here in Australia, but they are both really good quality. Uh, if you like their lineups or if you just like these hammers, I can re recommend both of them. And I think part of the performance is because they both have really good batteries going on too. Not sure what kind of cells are in here, but this is a five and a half amp hour, so it's not near 18650s. But both of these batteries, this guy is, is a multi-volt one. Uh, I think that really does help uh, drive these tools very well. Um, unlike the other brands, they're not trying to stick you for a sort of basic quality battery and then like a high output battery. I think with both of these guys, they're both just going for the top quality from the start. Uh, so in terms of comfort, just anecdotally, uh, I reckon these three were the most comfortable to use. They've got some good anti-vibration on there. Obviously the, De the DeWalt's got some inbuilt stuff, which means it's just like riding a cloud. I, I honestly wasn't even sure if this thing was hammering properly. It's so smooth. Uh, but the Ramset, Bosch, and uh, the AEG Rigid, both really nice rides as well. I'd never used an AEG Rigid tool before, and uh, i got to say this one feels pretty nice. So this one is the 2022 version, but it still seems to be modeled over the older Milwaukee drill. Uh, keep an eye out. I reckon they're gonna be releasing one based on the M18FH pretty soon as well. So it'll be like a, an orange version of the Ryobi. So the Makita, real nice feeling tool, real nice to use. But she does have the lowest impact force of the drills I tested here today. And uh, I could kind of feel that on a big drilling task like this. Still real solid tool, nothing wrong with that at all. And the Ryobi, so I've already covered this one in a couple of videos and it's obviously very impressive and very good value. And I did use the high performance battery for this testing. If you wanna see what kind of difference that makes, go check out the video. Well, there you have it guys, a couple of surprises in there, but overall, best value, uh, best performance goes to the DeWalt DCH133. Gotta say, I'd never touched a DeWalt tool before I started do doing this testing and I am super impressed with them. Now, if you don't like yellow, or if you're maybe just looking for best performance and you don't really care about the weight or the price or whatever, the new Milwaukee is looking like a real winner as well. So thanks to all our contestants today. I have had a lot of fun doing this. Uh, it's really been a dream of mine to just see how all these guys go. This is probably the biggest head-to-head -head, uh, of rotary hammers ever made. I as far as I know, so that's not bad. So if you are into this sort of thing, if you love rotary hammers like I do, do smash that subscribe button and uh, stick around because I've only done deep dive videos for about half of these hammers. The rest are coming up in the near future. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll scratch you later.